uh, as you said, uh, as you see before, uh, there are numerical statistical analysis for analyzing TDS on Ticata data. You show with Pascal and uh, and uh, and, Caroline, and Caroline. Um, there are many similarity, but uh, even if the concept is uh, is different, uh, the main use analysis is the curves of attribute proportion of citations. So it's the closest representation of raw data at panel level, but it also lack of a global test. Uh, as you know, there are several types of tests to, to, to assess for significance, binomial test, multinomial proportion test, etc. And uh, another limitation is uh, all these tests are unidimensional when the, the, the nature of the data is, is very multidimensional. So th there are alternatives based on duration analysis, such as uh, analysis of variance, PCA or CVA. Um, there, are, there, there is global test for, for, for this, uh, with this analysis, and they are most of the time easy to interpret. But uh, in the process, the, the sequentiality of the perceived sensation is lost, uh, except when we divide the time in, a, in a, we split time in period. But in this case, the, the, the number and the frontier of the period is most of the time subjective, as, uh, as Damien said, for, uh, as a question, for example. Uh, the only one that deals with that is uh, LQL, but uh, it is in the semi-Markov chain paradigm. And finally, maybe you, you already saw trajectory maps, such as PCA of durations and uh, or correspondence analysis, uh, always on, uh, on trajectory. The, this represent. Could you yes? put in mode diaporama, s'il te plaît? Ah, sorry. Okay. It's better. Uh, no. No. It's, not, it's the same. We, we still see your screen, your PowerPoint screen with the slides on, on, on the left. Really Is it okay? Up. No? No. Oh. Um, okay. Have you shared the full window or the, the specific one? I will. Yes. So it's never mind. You can. Is it okay now? Ah, uh, it's better. Okay, sorry. So I, I uh, take again. Um, uh, I speak about trajectory maps that have the advantage of uh, uh, representing within and between product the between products evolution, but uh, subject heterogeneity is not taken account. There is no test. And as Benjamin uh, demonstrated, the CA is not the best framework for Ticata because of multiple responses at a given time. And when you have uh, at your disposal all these outputs, uh, the question arises about interpretability and actionability for product design. So the objectives of this presentation is to determine a framework that will automatically, automatically determine the number on frontiers of periods um, that aims to best represent the breaks in the temporal percep perception of products at panel level. Um, my, my objective is to simplify and to objectif objectify product temporal characterization using a, a unique multidimensional approach and use this framework to study key moments in perception. I think the second point is very important because for example, when Pascal interpret a curve, I never have the same reading as him. So it's very important to have tools to, to objectify things. Um, I tested this approach on a large data sets um, in this data, in this study, we, we, we tested six methods, TDS, Ticata, on four variants of attack evolution finished. But in this presentation, I will focus on TDS and Ticata data. So uh, two group of 64 consumers participated in uh, three sessions, one in lab, two at home, and they tested uh, 20 samples belonging to four product species, dark chocolates, guacamoles, iced tea, and crisps. And today I will only show results on crisps. So the principle to determine the number on fronting of period is indeed very simple. For each product, 
we first standardize on discretized times in 100 points between 0 0.01, which is the first perception, and 1, which is the end of the perception. Then we can compute uh, a multiple response uh, correspondence analysis, so the, the, the framework introduced by Benjamin. So instead of product, we will consider discretized time as observations. Then we can carry out an agglomerative clustering on the row coordinates of the maps on axis 1, 2. And uh, it, it is very important with the strength of temporal contiguity uh, between the, the clusters. And finally, we can determine periods based on clusters with the suggested partition being the one with the higher relative loss of inertia between clusters uh, with a constraint of a minimum of three clusters. An alternative being, uh, as with all clustering, a number of clusters determined by users. I highlighted this sentence in red uh, be because maybe it is not the best, uh, the best way to determine the, the, the cluster, but for the moment, I, I have not a better approach. So uh, here is an example on a, a CRISP, a CRISP C3. So this is the, the table, you, know, you see the, the column product is, of, is useless in this case because observation is discussed as times. I computed uh, an MRCA. We obtain the, the, the map on the right and the blue points are indeed discretized, discretized time. So there is a pattern from left to right uh, with a, a product evolution uh, inside C3. Um, the second step is to cluster um, the, the points uh, with the, the constraint of temporal contiguity that I mentioned. So it is very important that point uh, 0 0.01 uh, well, is not grouped with point 0 0.25 uh, 25 if, these two, if the groups are not consecutive. And uh, uh, you see on the dendrogram the suggested partition uh, with the previous criterion. Um, finally, you can project the period on TDS curves to visually inspect if the, the period makes sense. Uh, in this example, it seems to, to be the case, as we can see, the first period corresponds to the first peak of uh, CRISPR. The second one is probably due to the decreasing of um, uh, hard. The third one is probably due to the increasing of salty and the last one to the appearance of potato. So when, once uh, this, uh, this period splitting is done, uh, I think it's an interesting approach to, to study within product discrimination. In this case, we will replace discretized time by periods. And so we can compute a new contract new contingency tables, uh, and to compute this table, there are two possible methods of aggregation at subject level. The original matrix is this one, and the second one is this one. My, uh, the approach that I consider for, for this presentation is applicability. Uh, it is an attribute, uh, a score was given of one if an attribute has been seated during the period zero otherwise. So duration are not taken into account. But there is uh, another approach consisting in averaging the score over period. And uh, it is a very, uh, it is equivalent to weighting the, the, the citation by duration. Again, uh, I'm thinking the, um, in the thinking process and maybe the second option in red is better, but at the moment, I did not analyze the data with the, the second uh, method. So if I came back to my, uh, my TDS curve on the left, you can see now we can have a, a representation, a multidimensional representation with MRCA. And as Benjamin uh, showed previously, you can summarize this multidimensional map in a table that should be interpreted by row. So the first line uh, tell us that uh, the descriptor hard is very important in period, sorry, not very important, is uh, the much present applicable in, uh, in period four. Uh, if we read the second line, the descriptor uh, hard 
has been most sit in period one, as well as uh, crispy uh, and so on. Green cells are significant test, uh, uh, sorry. Green cells are the significant test per cell um, as uh, introduced by Benjamin. So if we visually inspect TDS curves, and uh, if we compare the, this conclusion uh, to the result observed in this table, we, we can see very similar chains between the, the significance level interpretation in TDS curves and the MRCA approach, except for a few descriptors, which are here insipid, roasted, um, sticky, and uh, insipid. Why this descriptor highlight in MRCA and not in TDS curves? My supposition is um, it is because there is a lag, a time lag in perception. If you see the, the, the red square, we can see here uh, insipid descriptor, here uh, roasted, and here salty. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, but salty, uh, sticky. And uh, maybe uh, at a given time, they, they don't have the opportunity to reach the significance level, but when we summarize the, the continuous time in period, uh, you can see the, the, the highlighted in, in yellow cell. The, the, this is not uh, uh, nothing. The insipid was was seated by 20% of uh, panelists during period three and four, and did the same for for all descriptor in uh, in yellow. So uh, with this method, we also capture changes in proportion of citation between periods, and not only between products or. Uh, so the, the rationale is the same with the TKTA. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, there is no test to, to interpret uh, within product discrimination or, or evolution in TKTA. With MRCA, we can also see that uh, ARD is very is the much important in period one, um, crispy in, in period one, um, fat in period two potato and salty in period two. And there is nothing in period three because uh, of all descriptors that have a proportion rate that decrease over time. So it clearly highlights a different kinetics between descriptors. If I apply this, uh, this framework on all the, the products, uh, if you remind, uh, I see we, we study four product species. This table summarizes the conclusion obtained um, and uh, the frontier obtained in TDS and the frontier in Tecata. So the, the main differences between TDS and Tecata are not the number of, um, of frontier, but the interpretation uh, of this frontier. And it's not a surprise that TDS show major breaks in perception, while Tecata highlight much changes in citation rates. And it is interesting to notice, to notice that um, these periods are non-uniform and product dependent. So splitting the, the time in uniform periods, uh, it's a nonsense. And uh, um, something that is to confirm, but that seems logical and sensory for, from a sensory point of view, that there, there are much changes at the beginning of the texting because probably of the texture. So I show you how to study within product evolution, uh, evolution with uh, MRCA um, on considering observation as period, but you can also study within period differences. Uh, in this case, observation our products cross period, or you can also study between products on period differences. So trajectory, in fact, and in this case, observations our products cross periods. And uh, this analysis can be performed on the whole product space, on all products, or restricted to a subset of products, for example, a given pair of products. So, for example, this is an example of within period differences in TDS uh, for the whole product space of CRISP in period one. And again, you can interpret um, this table uh, by row. So, Hard was the most important in, in CRISP C4. Hard was the more important in uh, product C1 and C3. And salty was more important on C1 and C2, for example. So it, it enables to difference between products 
uh, during first period to, to be tested. And finally, you can also study between products and period differences, so the, the trajectory that I mentioned. Um, here, it's the, the, the trajectory with no data transformation, so the, this trajectory is a little uh, noisy. You can simplify them considering periods on all products in the left map or on a given pair of products on the right map, uh, the second one being equivalent to the difference curves in TDS or in Tecata. Uh, and th these outputs are not often very simple to interpret. For the... So again, uh, you can use the, the table to objectify the, objectify the interpretation of trajectories. To conclude, though, I presented a framework that is common for TDS and Tikata that is based on a unique multidimensional paradigm adapted to multiple responses. It takes the subject heterogeneity into account. The number and frontier of period do not depend on test, but uh, as I said, uh, the actual criterion is uh, still uh, largely improvable. Uh, you can also test product at different uh, differences at different level uh, within or between products, but also um, on all product space or by a subset of products. Uh, it is possible to reduce the temporal signal in a limited number of periods. So it is a simplification and maybe an objectivation of the interpretation of this temporal data. And maybe it is the right level that can be useful. Uh, this, this key moment uh, of the product maybe can help uh, uh, industrial to, 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 better product, uh, to better formulate, formulate their, their products. And finally, uh, there was never more than four periods. So uh, as you know, maybe you know, I, I introduced AEF as a retrospective method to, to investigate temporality into product. In AEF, just three period, attack, evolution, finish. And uh, from this study, it seems that it is reasonable to compare the, the, the data, even if the, it seems um, less rich than the continuous time data. It questioned me about the resolution of temporal methods and the granularity of temporal data. And uh, especially, I, I wonder if sequentiality of sensation based on period uh, is more appropriate than duration to study temporality. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Michel. Um, thank you. There is there are just a few minutes be, before the end of this session, but uh, Damien has a question and John also. So, John, you are on the floor. for a very short question. Michelle, thank you for your for your talk. That was really interesting. I, I, I just had a quick question because I was thinking about the fact that you're clustering with the Ward's method. And it's, uh, you know, it, I, to be honest, I hadn't been aware of this uh, approach of, of enforcing with more Ward's method, this sort of um, spatial continuousness. And, and what I'm wondering about, I guess, in particular, is that if I've understood correctly, you have applied Ward's method to results that you're getting from uh, this chi-square test, uh, from the chi-square table, is that right? Are you? No, no, from the coordinates of MRCA. It, it, are those, do they, okay. I, I think I see where you're going with that. And, and is that a valid, uh, metric to like the case yeah, um, is the metric so i'm wondering yeah. if that's okay it is uh, indeed the the mr kido mr square uh, metric uh, that is underlying okay thank you You're welcome thank you uh damien do, do you ask your question directly or yes okay Hello, Damien. Uh, to answer your question, yes, uh, I think it's possible and I think better to transpose uh, the approach for, uh, for segmentation for within subject and thus to study repeatability. 
Okay. I think it's better than uh, a subjective uh, a subjective choice of number of periods. Or to choose all the number, all the key periods. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes, thank you. It's interesting to, to, to suggest an approach to identify this period within a formative uh, approach and without uh, constraint of uh, to, be, to have equal, equal length. It's uh, very interesting. Uh, 